But this little herb here, this little flower, this little uh, white flower with the yellow center, uh, is feverfew. And this feverfew is a volunteer. It came up all on its own. Uh, I actually have this tomato that I staked out, which is also a volunteer that came up all on its own. So, uh, and, and the fever few is starting to crowd out the tomatoes, so I decided to harvest from the volunteer part. This is something I should have done a long time ago, but I haven't, so we're going to just go over fever few real quick. Fever few is something that a lot of people plant, and once you plant it, once it's in your garden, a lot of times it will come up as a volunteer, like this group did. Fever few has three main uses. Um, but first let's look at it here. Here is the leaf of feverfew. It has deeply lobed leaves. Feverfew, the leaves grow in alternate, meaning they don't grow opposite from each other. They grow one here and then a little further up the stem, the, uh, the other side comes off. So they also, usually in the excess of the leaves, right there where the leaves and the plant comes together, that's a lot of times where you get your flower bud, one of your flower buds. And you, again, you can see the leaf there. Now, feverfew has three uses, and the first use is that it is a bitter, and a bitter, it describes the flavor of it. It's not, it's not a pleasant thing. Most people don't like to eat bitters. Uh, we used to, human beings used to eat bitters a lot more, but when we created our modern, um, our modern day diet, we made food, we, we raised our, or bred our cattle and bred our plants to have more sweet sugars in them instead of the bitters. And so people aren't used to eating the bitters anymore. Bitters are very good for you. They aid in digestion. And they also, they help stimulate the gallbladder. And we're having more and more and more gallbladder diseases. And I kind of think it has a lot to do with our modern day diet. We're not getting as much fiber and we're not getting the bitters that stimulate that to release bile. Um, it just helps your body digest. The other thing, and probably the more, what feverfew is more known for, is feverfew helps dilate your blood vessels and it's very good for people who have migraine headaches. Uh, migraine headaches a lot of times have to do with the constriction of blood vessels. And so people that, who get migraine headaches will often take a leaf a day and eat it. Um, it's again very bitter. Most people eat it like in a, in a sandwich made of hummus, you know, a very spicy hummus or a very spicy pepperoni or sausage, something on that order, something that helps disguise that bitter taste. But you do have to eat it a leaf a day pretty much constantly. Um, it, it, it's not like something you get a headache and you take it. That's not how it works. It works best if you eat it on a continuous basis just a leaf a day. Uh, what we're going to use it for is we're going to trim off, we're going to trim it way down, it'll come back, but we're going to trim it way down, take a lot of these flowers off, and, and the leaves, we're going to take a lot of the aerial, the above ground parts, and I'm going to make a tincture out of it. And the tincture you can use for migraine headaches, again, take a little bit of it a day, it's not the best, the fresh leaf is the best, um, but you can use it for that. But what we're going to use that for is if you rub the, or wipe the tincture on your skin, it makes a fly repellent. And this summer, uh, this is why I'm running so late, I should have had this done a long time ago. Uh, first of all, A, to get it away from the poor uh, volunteer tomato here, but also because it does take a good month or so to make itself work. But we're going to put it in a tincture, which I'll show you how that's done. Most people know how to make a tincture, but just in case, it's very simple to do. I'll show you how it's done. And with a little bit of lemon verbatim, and it makes a very good fly repellent. And it's also very, you know, it's not bad to put on your skin. A lot of times that we put things on our skin uh, for flies, it's not, you know, they're not good for us, but we do it because what's worse, the fly bites or the toxins we're putting on our skin. Well, this doesn't last as long. It's not going to be like you put it on and four hours later or eight hours, you know, they talk about deep woods off, it lasts for 12 hours. This is not going to last for 12 hours. You're going to have to reapply it a lot. That's its main thing. Um, but it does work pretty uh, well as a fly repellent short term and I put it on my horse's ears and um, 
little llama's ears if they let me, <laughs> which doesn't always happen. And sometimes I'll even rub it across the dogs and things like that just to keep the biting flies off. This year is going to be a good year for flies. It's dry and hot. Uh, wet, hot years, it's good for mosquitoes. Dry, hot years, it's good for flies. A cool year, it's not good for the garden though it's good for not getting the flies on you. But we've got a dry, hot year. In fact, um, we may be even looking at kind of dangerously dry, hot year for fires and droughts and everything. But uh, for flies, we're going to need some sort of protection. So I'm going to clip this off, and then I'll take you over to the lemon verbatim and show you that. And we're going to gather up both of these, and then we'll go in and make a t-shirt. Okay, this is definitely a garden herb. You're not going to find this in the wild. Feverfew, you may find it's more likely to be a garden herb, but it's definitely, uh, or but, but you can find it in the wild. This is definitely going to be a garden herb, especially here in Wisconsin, because it does not survive the winter. This one's in a pot, because I'm going to take it in and out. And it's mixed in. This is some mint and rosemary and some stevia back there. Again, things that I'm going to take in and out. But this is a lemon verbatim, and because I'm growing it in a pot, I need to keep it trimmed down. I'm going to take a few sprigs off of this. This is mainly, uh, lemon verbatim is something that you add and you mix together with other things. Mainly, it, it yes, it has the lemon, um, you know, a little bit of that lemon healing power like lemon balm has. When you get that citrusy smell, you'll get a little bit of lemon. Uh, you'll get a little bit of healing going. But mainly what we're using this for is for its essential oils, and that is for its scent. We want to use it as something that adds a little bit more pleasant of a scent. Uh, the lemon, the citrus smell, does tend to repel bugs. Most bugs don't like it, so we're going to use it in our bug um, in our bug spray tincture or bug rub tincture, our fly to help prevent flies. It was also used in the Middle Ages as a strewing herb because it has such a strong smell. It's a very powerful lemon smell. You don't have to, I mean, just touching it like that, you get that smell. And what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm not only trimming this up so that I can use it, but I'm also wanting to keep it um, growing as a bush and you can see here here I trimmed up a little piece and then it came out a bunch of little ones all over and so I'm going to do the same here I'm going to trim it down and just kind of just above the leaf whorl here and that's lemon verbatim that they grow in three leaf whorls like that that come off these lance like leaves that come off the stem and the other big thing that you can do is you go like this and smell it. And I'm just going to take a few of this just to trim it up. I'm going to trim up these things here, and then I'm going to stuff them into my jar and I'll, uh, with my with my fever few, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'll be back in just a little bit. And I forgot to add that because it has the essential oils to it, lemon verbatim is an anti-microbial. Uh, if you are if you rub this over your hands, you're going to help kill off the germs on your hands just because of the essential oils. It is a topical disinfectant, very good for that. So, and like I said, you can add it to any of your teas if you want a little bit of a lemon flavor, and it in itself will help. That will help, um, you know, help you like with a cold or something like that. I'd go with lemon balm before I went with lemon verbatim, but the essential oils in lemon verbatim are, are much stronger than in lemon balm. So. Um, Lemon balm in itself is a good healer, but the essential oils here are very good for uh, disinfecting things. So anyway, I'm going to just, I, all I need is a small handful, again, just to kind of add a little bit of a more pleasant scent to it because feverfew, some people are very put off by the scent. So this is just to add a little bit more of a scent to it. And then um, um, also just to add because bugs don't like the smell of the citrus smell. So. Uh, I'm going to go put that in. I'll show okay, you how to make it. So we have a jar here. It doesn't have to be wide mouth. It doesn't have to be a canning jar. Just a nice clean jar. And I've stuffed the fever few down in there. And then on top I stuffed my small handful of lemon verbatim. And over here we have a little bit of moonshine. Um, if you Anything that's 80 proof vodka or stronger will work fine with this. Uh, these are very soft plants, so an 80 proof or above vodka will work fine. When you're getting into roots or bark or things like that, you're going to want a stronger thing. If you don't make your own, which it's illegal to make your own, so don't, of course. Uh, but if you don't make your own and Everclear is legal in your state, go buy Everclear. 
I do believe it's probably 90 to 95 percent alcohol. I think it's 100 and 190 proof, so that would be 95 percent alcohol, which is very, very, very strong. So what we're going to do, this is um, this is just home brew here, and we're just going to pour it over, cover this up and then put a lid on it and label it and really that's all making a tincture is then what we're going to do every we're going to leave it in a place that we can come along and we'll just shake it two three times a day four times a day it really doesn't matter just you know just to keep it mixed and get all the plant material uh, soaked and then um, we'll label it and then in about a month month and a half we'll decant it and take the plant material out and your liquid left that's left is going to be your bug repellent. So I'm going to be right back and I'm going to get okay, this going. So just to show you here, I'm just going to pour our... And some people will say you got to stick with a clear liquor. Don't worry about that. If you got some brandy, brandy will work fine. Your main thing is you just want it to be at least 80 proof. Then we're just going to cover it up. And I can already smell the fever fuel. As soon as the, as soon as the shine hit it, I could smell the fever fuel. But we're, that's that's it. That's how you make a tincture. It's really quite an easy thing to do. It's, you can use alcohol. You can use um, glycerin, which you can pick up at a drugstore, or you can use. Um, Oh, like apple cider vinegar. Your strongest is going to be alcohol, and things like feverfew really don't give up their medicinal value to um, the other two very well. Uh, alcohol is the best for feverfew. So, um, again, this is going to be a topical, but it can be used if you have headaches. You can take about 50 drops of the, the tincture a day. 50 to 70, just start off on the smaller amount and that will help um, build up so that your your blood vessels stay open so you don't get um, headaches or migraine headaches. It also is an ingredient, feverfew is an ingredient that can be used for uh, helping with high blood pressure. So if, you know, you can mix it with other things too, but Start off with your fever few tincture. We've got a little lemon verbatim just for smell. Uh, this is going to be a insect repellent in a little bit, mainly for biting flies in the hot, dry summer.